welcome. <laughs> um, Thank you. I guess walk, walk me through uh, kind of your decision making process and, and how South Carolina came into the picture and ultimately you know how you got here. Um, I mean, South Carolina. I've I've enjoyed South Carolina. Um, the week week and a half that I've been here, um, you know, this decision has been a life changing decision for me, and you know, it's just the next step that I've. Um, taken in my life and I'm excited about you know um, things don't always go you know the way you plan the first time around and you know I've learned that through this process but um, this weekend and a half has taught me that this is the right place for me. What have you learned so far in your career in the last couple of years? Woo! That you know you don't things don't always go your way um, you know coming out of high school I was you know, top of my class and, you know, leading scorer of California. And, you know, I expected that going into college. Um, and that's not how it was, you know. You're coming into college with a lot of great people surrounding you. It's a different environment that, you know, high school players don't really understand. And so, you know, I didn't understand that. And so, you know, it's a lot of challenges that are brought your way. And so I think the number one thing I've learned in college is, you never know what's going to happen, but, you know, stick to it and, you know, adapt. With your experience with that, how do you think you can help these young girls coming in that, you know, you can say, like, hey, I've been in your shoes, and sometimes life will throw you a curveball. I guess, I guess how are you coming in maybe from leadership, even mentorship standpoint? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, just with the freshman class, um, you know, obviously they're the number one recruiting class in the nation. So it, with that comes a lot of outside attention. And, you know, I just try to tell them, you know, stick to stick to who you are. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of people who hope you fail, and there's also going to be a lot of people who hope you succeed. So, you know, just being there through those times that dip, get difficult because there's definitely going to be times that, you know, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, I didn't think it was going to be this difficult. But there's also going to be times where they're going to have fun and love it. And so, you know, just making sure that they know that I'm there for them. Um, because, you know, obviously I didn't have it easy either. And But I also had people like that to lean on. So, you know, just being that voice and that shoulder to lean on when things don't go their way. Does Daniel filed a waiver for immediate eligibility for this um, year? Not yet, but we are going to. Do you have any kind of indication how that might go? I know the NCA is kind of squirrely on how they decide those. Um, yeah, we're we're kind of just in the you know in the beginning process of it. Um, we don't really know right now, you know, all the logistics of it, but we're definitely going to follow waiver. Assuming that it doesn't come through, what is your role for this team this year? You know, just just be there for my team. Um, like I like he said, I do. I am a junior, so you know I have that experience under my belt. You know I've been in college for two years, you know, so I know kind of the ins and outs and you know the ups and downs of it, you know, on and off the court. So you know, just kind of be that voice, you know, that that leader and you know somebody who, you know, when people are going through things, they can fall back on. Is it easy to come into a new place, new school, new teammates, and automatically be looked on as a leader because you're a junior and try to be that leader? Um, by no means. It is not easy. Um, but, you know, I think that's a challenge for me because I'm not really a, you know, outspoken type of person. I'm kind of a laid back person, but I think this team has really kind of changed that for me. You know, I'm more comfortable speaking out and, you know, being the person I am, you know, I have a really high IQ. And so I've been more comfortable you know, speaking that immediately from the start. So, you know, just if it doesn't go my way, you know, God always has a reason for it. So, you know, I'm, things happen and, you know, it's not the end of the world. What's hotter here in Texas? <laughs> it's a different type of heat. <laughs> it's a different type of heat. What, what Was Don Staley's track record with transfers with Kayla Davis, Alicia Gray, did that kind of play into your decision making to come here? Um, Honestly, I, I didn't really, really look into that type of stuff. Um, you know, I did ask her, you know, about transfers and, you know, how she handles them and, you know, that type of stuff. But um, it was more so about my future and, you know, what I can do for the program and, you know, how, how can she help me get out of the slump that I was in. And so, you know, it was kind of more of that than more so of, you know, how she dealt with transfers in the past. What's your first impression of Don, of Don Staley? I know she's kind of kind of an icon. So what, what was it like meeting her for the first time? 
She's about her business, and you know, that's kind of what I grew up with, and I told her from the jump, that's somebody who I need, you know, moving forward, because I have goals in my life as well, and so, you know, I need somebody to get on me, you know, with anything that, you know, might not go my way, um, I need that, and so she's about her business, um, but she's also a loving and caring woman as well, so um, I really enjoy that about her.